All right, all right, all right, all righty, guys. It's been taking me a minute to try and get everything I need to prepare for this video, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. Uncle Daddy Luke here coming with another video, and today we'll be talking about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. This is a video that I wanted to do probably three months ago, but, you know, Lazy Bone hits everybody, and you don't get to things as soon as you want to. But better late than never. So with this video, I wanted to talk about the characters that I think will be in Grand Blue Fantasy versus and the characters I somewhat want to be in the game and more so on the idealistic standpoint of the characters that without any influences probably will be in the game. Now, since Evo just happened and we got all the new news about Grand Blue Fantasy versus and the release date, of course, and, you know, the controversial standpoint of... The game will be 11 characters base roster and then 5 characters DLC. Now, I was going to write more about it, but I've had time to calm down. But really, just what I wanted to say on that standpoint is that I just don't get it. I just don't get how you can have 11 characters and then charge literally almost half for DLC for a 16 character starting out for season 1. People forget, oh, it's a new series, it's a new all this, all that. You have to completely start up everything from the uh, top to bottom. But Guilty Gear XR signed the very first game that came out for PS4 after the, what, 10-year hiatus. Had 17 characters, I think, uh, base roster. I think you had to pay for Leo, or he was day one DLC. Then Sin and Elfelt. They had, what, six new characters that weren't in original Guilty Gear games that came out. And also Street Fighter V, I mean, that was probably the most controversial base roster of a game in a while for a fighting game because it came out with 16 before DLC. And I think literally half were, or seven or six were characters that weren't in Street Fighter Four already. So I just don't get it from the idealistic standpoint of how you can be just so unthoughtful and <laughs> literally you're a money grab company. I mean, Psy Games makes plenty of money. So hopefully down the line, like they do for their gotcha games, their mobile games, is that they give us characters or stuff free down the line. But just a huge company like Psy Games, they make plenty of money off the mobile games. I don't know how they're trying to be stingy and just only want to have 11 characters and charge you half. But I mean, I guess that's where they get you. Every time I play Shadowverse, they're trying to get me to buy a new pack if I can't beat a boss twice in a row. So <sighs> off of that, so with that, noted. The characters that I think I want are the highest chances of being in the game. And with that being said, I just remembered with 11 characters base roster and the characters that are somewhat confirmed and the characters that are confirmed, it is already at 11 for a base roster before DLC. With the 8 that are already released at the time of EVO, I mean, I think it's two weeks after EVO, and then the characters whose weapons were shown in the logo... With Matera, that's 9, Vasaraga, that's 10, and Zeta, that's 11. So we pretty much have our 11 base rosters. So I guess this will be Season 1 of DLC that I think will probably be in the game or characters that will come later on down the line. So, and with that saying, this was kind of my criteria for the characters that I chose. One is if they were in the anime. Even though Strom, Drang, Yujin, Rackham, and Eo were all integral parts of the story for the anime, I just don't think they'll be making it into the fighting game, even though some of them, especially on the good guy side, has been shown to be a part of the RPG. Them as fighting game characters, I don't know if that's the best choice, because there's a lot of characters they can choose from, and can't, or are more favorited in the actual gacha realm of the Grand Blue Fantasy Versus series. So with them, I don't think they'll make it, but if they did, I wouldn't be surprised. But the one character that was strictly in the anime I think could make it is the Black Knight, the character who's literally the exact opposite of Catalina, who seems to be the biggest antagonist. I think she has the biggest likelihood chance of making it into the game. Also, too, with being in the anime, I don't think any Primal Beasts will be any of the character roster spots as well. So Rosetta, even though she's shown to be in the RPG, before we got all this information at EVO, I just didn't think she'd be part of the game because she's a primal beast as a character you can play with. So character like Zooey, Zooey, Zoe, even though she's probably the most popular character in the Grand Blue Fantasy versus realm, I just don't think she'll be making the cut because she's a primal beast as well. 
So with no Primal Beast being in the game and the characters that are shown in the anime, I think will take priority. The remaining characters that probably have the likeliest chance of being in the game because they were shown in that episode 12 when they just had a whole bunch of characters, which also shown uh, Zeta as well. I think UL, Normaya, Cerise, Feather, and Silva are all safe bets to place on. So to me, with the DLC, out of those six characters, five of them will be the most likeliest to make the cut. But now, with my logic, I also conducted a list of characters that I would like to be in the game, and I constructed them through these criterias. They usually either have five-star character arts, have a story art, or are SSR characters. Obviously, Luane is just a rare character, but he's the chef for the main crew, and the diva is just that grappler type that every uh, fighting game needs to have, and I think he fits that aspect perfectly, especially with him being gender, gender neutral. But obviously, it's not an exact science, and this is just my preferred list. Also, too, characters like Albert, since I play Shadowverse, I don't know if he's supposed to be strictly from Shadowverse or he's supposed to be strictly from Grand Blue Planet, Grand Blue Fantasy, but it's kind of weird. I'm just going to leave him kind of out of the list and characters like him out of the list and characters I know for sure are just in the Grand Blue Fantasy realm. It would be cool if they incorporated different games from Shadowverse and what is the other game that they have? I forget. But without... Further ado, the first character I want to talk about is Vayne. He's part of Percival and Lancelot's group. He felt seems like he can fit that axe character mode because I know too it's huge in the game is that it's customizing your weapon. So that's not something I really took into account when I first came up with this list three months ago. But now that I think about it now, he could fit that mode very well. So Vayne, he's kind of up there. He's just kind of a safe pick. Also, Siegfried, which is my character that I put that I wanted in the game after the beta first came out. He has a five-star art. He has a story art. He looks badass, and he just seems like the perfect fit for a DLC character to me. I would have loved to have him in base roster, but whatever. Uh, Eustace, he doesn't really fit the mode for anything. He's not a... Well, I mean, he's an SSR character, but he doesn't have a five-star art, and he's not pretty integral to the story mode, but he's black. And you need more black characters in fighting games. Just going to leave that at there. Uh, Amira, I think, would be next. She's that brawler type as well uh, that would fit the character weapon mode. She has a five-star art, and she just looks really cool. And it's kind of somewhat my type. You know, I'm going to be kind of biased with the picks that I have chosen. Ayer is next. He's also a melee type, and he's kind of edgelord. You know, I like my edgelords, man. I'm not gonna lie i'm very basic on what i like but he just seems like he'd be a cool pick as well to be in the game how now we're just gonna throw this out there every fighting game has to have some kind of lolly well anime game fighting game has to have some kind of lolly she's apparently 19 but she's a draft so that's the reason why she's shorter and looks kind of younger but she has a five-star art. She looks kind of cool. I've never seen a character with a chainsaw before. So I think that'd be pretty cool to incorporate. Now, let's get on to my baby. And that's John Day Arc. Uh, she just looks like the perfect stereotype of <laughs> uh, fighting games. Especially, she looks uh, so, sort of similar to the character from Soul Calibur. But she's just so cool, man. The, the drawings they have for her in the game... And she also has a dark side too that has a character a story art. Her regular herself when she's good has the five star art, and her evil side has a the story art. So it'd be cool if they incorporated like a light and dark side. She could switch between. I'm sure Arcus could do something cool with her if they didn't make it into two different characters. Now next I want to talk about is Lady Grey. She looks super cool. She looks kind of like a Persona character. Which, you know, I'm hoping for they eventually end up doing that one day. So she'll just summon her gruel behind her and use him as some kind of aspect. If you hit him, you also hurt her. So I think that'd be a cool character design to have as well in the game. Now let's also get into somebody else that's super, that fits pretty much all the criteria. She has a five-star character art and a story art. And she's, you know, waifu. And they've kind of similarly done a character like her in the past, which is Magisa. Well, her name is Magisa. They've done Nine the Phantom in Blaze Blue, and she seems like uh, 
you know, it literally the exact same kind of character she is. So I also see her being a big chance of getting in the game as lo- along with Siegfried. Vera, uh, also a character that's just kind of uh, my <laughs> my to my liking. She's also the one that's kind of obsessed with Catalina. So that'd be cool if they had some kind of interaction within the game itself. So now, uh, with these last couple of characters, this is obviously no influences whatsoever. I'm just kidding. Coefficient's great. You guys should go check out the whole three-hour-long video that he did that I watched myself about talking with the other guy that he had on the video about potential characters and just summing up Grand Blue Fantasy in, in and of itself. But Tanya, she's strictly just a rare character. She has an SSR, but her regular pool is just a rare character. But, I mean, she's short-haired. She's a ninja. I mean, I guess technically Luane has daggers, but, you know, she could be strictly daggers. She could be set up. She could be pressure. She just looks like she will fit that mold very well, actually. And, you know, me, like I said, man, I'm not just going to try and hide what I'm into. She's just that for me. But also, too, is Elisa. And she could fit that melee character brawler-esque type. She does look hella like Jam Kura Debera. The Barry, however you pronounce it, just jam from Guilty Gear. And, you know, you can pretty much just slap her moveset onto her. And it pretty much would be able to be incorporated very well from day one. Or, you know, whatever DLC they do. And also Monica, uh, just kind of my type. And she has a story arc too. Also, if you don't put the Hala Asina as the Lolly in the game, you can put Monica. Apparently, she's overage. <laughs> she's of age but you know just to throw that in there for the japanese fan group out there that is into that aspect now i don't really just want to get into which of these what i just named what 10 or 12 i think are most likely to get into the dlc but these are just characters that i think would have a good chance from what i put as the criteria the ssr the five star art and the story art as well and just kind of to my liking like tanya and also elisa but definitely get in the conversation. Let me know of the characters that you've seen or looked into or if you play the mobile game yourself that you would love to see in the fighting game as well. And this has been Uncle Daddy Luke. Thank you for tuning in. Now I'm tuning out.